My name is Cindy Moss. I'm a professor at Johns Hopkins University in the Department of Psychological and Brain Sciences. I teach and I have a lab. And in my lab, we have a lot of echolocating bats. They're our research subjects. The work is related to brain initiative in two ways. One is that we um, have a collaborative effort between neuroscientists and engineers bringing uh, people together who have different skill sets to tackle a common problem. And also, we're interested in how the brain functions in the context of natural behaviors. And we use the echolocating bat as our animal model because we can have it fly around and use its echolocation to guide its behavior. The focus of our work is really trying to understand how sensory processing and action work together to build perceptions of the world. And what better animal model to study this problem than one that produces the sounds that guide its behavior. So echolocating bats make very high frequency sounds that bounce off of objects in the path of the sound beam. The echoes returning to the bat's ears provide information about the location and even the features of objects. Humans rely largely on their vision to navigate. So we see where objects are, we steer around them, there may be some objects that we our goals, we go towards them. And bats, contrary to common belief, are actually not blind, but they can operate in complete darkness using their echolocation. So that, as I mentioned, they make high frequency sounds and listen to echoes that return from objects. So that bats rely primarily on sound to guide navigation and humans on vision. But after that information is processed through the sensory systems, the animals and humans may rely on common neural mechanisms to use that information to then guide their behavior. Humans rely on vision to guide navigation to find objects, and bats use echolocation to find objects. Humans, when they're localizing objects, will move their eyes, and bats, when they're echolocating, will move their sound, so they can change the direction of the sound by moving the head. We've used a microphone array in my lab to reconstruct the directional aim of the bat's sound as it navigates around obstacles and takes targets. And very much like humans, bats sequentially inspect closely spaced objects. Um, so they're pointing their sound just the way we point our eyes. And we've been looking at brain mechanisms that are involved in the control of the beam directing behavior. And some of the brain structures are the same as those involved in directing the eyes. These societal implications are twofold. One, we are uncovering basic mechanisms of brain function. We're using an echolocating bat, as I mentioned, a mammal. And we really believe that some of the basic circuitry that supports the behaviors we're studying are common across mammals. And so when we understand normal function, we can then begin to investigate how it breaks down through disease. Second, um, as I mentioned, uh, there are humans that use echolocation. And so some of our findings may serve to inform the development of devices that can aid blind humans that rely on sound for navigation.